The Battle of Britain is one of the most famous World War II battles. From July to October 1940, the Royal Air Force fought the German Luftwaffe. At the start of the battle, Germany had over 50% more fighter aircraft at their disposal. But, as we know, the Luftwaffe ultimately lost, losing more planes, more pilots and getting outproduced by Britain. So in this video we will ask, could the result have been different if modern technology was in play? Say, 1940s Germany was given today's modern-day Luftwaffe instead. How would that influence the Battle of Britain? A message from Binkov's team first, you'll excuse us for that. But we've thoroughly revamped our Patreon page, so we believe it now offers some serious additional value. What's Patreon, you ask? It's a way for fans to support the creators. You pick a tier you're comfortable with and you enjoy the perks, while helping us out. The biggest change is this. Every patron, regardless of tier, will get access to our videos without any ads. No banners, no skippable pre-ads, no burnt-in sponsor ads. Nothing. Pure Binkov. Our second tier will also get access to a monthly poll, where our patrons will vote on several topics and pick the winning one, to be made into a Binkov's video. There are higher tiers still, offering early access to videos, super early access to our scripts for upcoming videos, becoming immortalized in the credits section of our videos and so on. Also keep in mind that YouTube comments are in the thousands, we can't possibly read them all. But on Patreon you are much more likely to get a reply to a specific comment. Anyway, if you want to check out what our Patreon offers, there's a link below this video, in the description section. Now onwards with the Battle of Britain 1940 meets 2020. The modern-day Luftwaffe gets taken through space and time, traveling to the summer of 1940 and replaces the existing Luftwaffe forces. Now, even if such a thing were possible, there would be a myriad of side effects – psychological, sociological, geopolitical, etc. For simplicity's sake, all those will be ignored. So all that personnel traveling through time and dimensions are just as hell-bent on defeating Britain as their 1940 counterparts are and existing German forces are unfazed by the event. So what would Germany be gaining and what would it be losing? Modern-day Air Force numbers are minuscule. Keep in mind, Britain was just one front in 1940. While other fronts weren't as active, there was still a large area that needed to have at least some air power present. Even though modern planes do have greater reach than their World War II counterparts, numbers still matter. One can't be in two places at once. The 1940 Luftwaffe had used over 80% of its fighters and almost all bombers for Britain. 2020's forces could also not afford to leave Berlin and Poland without at least a few dozen interceptors. So perhaps only a hundred Eurofighters would be available for the Battle of Britain. Tornado IDS planes would perform most of the strike missions on Britain. They are a poor choice for air combat. The radar is short-ranged and optimized for ground strikes. The Tornado carries but a pair of Sidewinder short-range missiles and a gun. Also, no plane could be in the air all the time, even in war. While one could keep sending the plane back into battle as it lands and gets refueled, that would both increase the risks of catastrophic failures due to no maintenance and would not be good for efficiently planned bombing runs. Usually surge sortie rates of 3 to 4 flights are possible for a day or two, but over a longer period those sortie rates inevitably fall, first to two flights per day for a few weeks, or if we're talking about a multi-month period, sortie rates will approach just one flight per plane, per day. The Luftwaffe of 2020 also doesn't have that many pilots, less than two per plane seat, and pilots do need rest, they can't go performing a three-hour mission, then head back for debrief and another briefing, and do that all over again two or three more times per day, each day so the modern Luftwaffe will be hard-pressed to actually strike the British targets in large numbers each day. But the British would have very little means of intercepting the Germans. Germany would send a strike or recon package of a dozen planes, for example. If they fly high up, at 40,000 feet or more, the British simply can't touch them. Anti-air artillery can't reach those altitudes effectively. In actual air combat, there would be no contest. Modern planes would track British fighters with radars from way out. The British would not even know they're tracked, and a missile would come out without a warning, blasting them out of the sky. 
Eurofighters and Tornadoes can easily cruise higher than Spitfires could ever reach and do so at almost twice the speed. Spitfires would need ages to get high up and they would still come up short. And today's AMRAMs are sometimes tasked with intercepting long-flying cruise missiles, which are harder targets to spot than a Spitfire. Of course, missile stocks are finite. There are no hard numbers out there as to how many AMRAMs Germany has bought over the decades, but it is likely there's up to a dozen AMRAMs for each Eurofighter in stock, with a similar number of short-range missiles and perhaps a few less per plane for tornadoes. So total stocks might range in the thousands, possibly close to 5000. Of course, even in the best conditions, missiles will sometimes miss. Sidewinders in the Falklands and AMRAMs later on went against technologically far inferior opponents, yet they didn't yield perfect hit rates. Still, it's evident that the RAF would be bleeding profusely if it attempted to go in the air. Germany's hit rates would likely be even better than the historical examples shown. So it is entirely plausible that if there would be enough targets presented, the modern Luftwaffe could bring down over 2000 British aircraft in just a week. That's double the number of fighter planes Britain had at the start of the war. That likely wouldn't happen though. After the initial few days, during which Britain would indeed likely lose a few hundred planes in the air, the RAF command would simply stop sending the air crews to sure deaths in such numbers. But they would still likely try out the German capabilities occasionally, to see if anything changed. Still, most of the British planes would be grounded and hidden, not daring to venture to the skies. Such absolute air superiority might even persuade the modern Luftwaffe to use other planes in combat missions, like trainers. The German Air Force today does have a hundred or so trainer planes. Some of those could be repurposed into light attack planes. They could drop down bombs on certain not so protected targets. Especially the fast T-38 trainers could be hard to hit with anti-aircraft fire. Of course, they would first need to be modified to use bombs. It's also possible Germany would be using any aircraft it has at disposal. Possibly even refitting transport planes to drop bombs, for example. But flying high up may not bring quick results to the Germans. And quick defeat is certainly something Germany wanted back then. Today, even from a high altitude, a plane equipped with guided bombs can do more damage than a whole group of high-flying World War II bombers. In one instance, US B-17s expended 300 bombs per one hit on a huge building. A single modern plane could be expected to get virtually all hits inside a large production hall. So medium-altitude bomb runs were also tried, to get a more decent hit rate. And the famous Stuka dive bombers even achieved almost pinpoint precision levels. But such low-level bombing also ended up costing the Germans too much. A quarter of Germany's Stukas were destroyed or damaged over Britain, and the Germans eventually stopped using them. But there's issue with using guided bombs. Planes must be configured to use them. Currently only a part of the modern German fleet is able to use such weapons. The modern Luftwaffe uses three main types of smart bombs. Two of them have satellite guidance. But in 1940 there would be no GPS satellites so laser guidance would be the only one available. And one needs laser designators for those bombs. Those come in the form of separate targeting pods, which aren't available for every plane. Germany purchased roughly two dozen pods. The problems don't stop there. Laser guidance requires fairly clear skies. If there is cloud cover, the plane needs to fly below it to successfully paint the target with a laser. Most clouds are to be found fairly low, up to several kilometers high. And Britain, famously, does have a lot of cloud cover. In July, the skies over London are mostly cloudy 43% of the time. In August, that goes up to 46%. September sees a rise to 50% and October is quite overcast with 57% of the time being mostly cloudy. So more often than not, laser guidance from high or medium altitude would not really work. Germany could thus bomb when the weather is fair and give the British respite between bomb runs. Or they could press on with low-flying raids and risk losses due to enemy AA fire and interception. So hitting the radar stations that the British used in the real timeline might be important for the modern Luftwaffe as well. Without them, the British would not get a warning and could not react in time, prepping both anti-air guns and interceptors. But even then, could a Spitfire or a Hurricane shoot down a fast and low-flying Tornado or Eurofighter? Very rarely. 
we're talking about planes cruising at over 650 miles per hour. Compare that with the speed of U-88 or U-87 bombers that the real timeline REF had to deal with. In theory, those modern planes could even go supersonic at low altitudes, but it wouldn't be worth it due to much greater fuel consumption. The British might spot incoming Germans from a few miles away and start shooting, hoping for a lucky hit, but that wouldn't really happen as a rule, because modern radars on German jets would spot those British groups on patrol and change course, actively avoiding them. Their speed edge would allow for such actions as the British could not hope to hit anything unless they're really close by, less than a mile away. Tornado planes, even though their radar is fairly poor, could still spot groups from decent distances, upward of a dozen miles away. And they could also be guided by Eurofighters when in mixed groups. The Tornado could still fairly confidently launch Sidewinders from, say, 6 miles away and then simply disengage and change course. While the British could have their interceptors patrol over the target areas where bomb would need to land, that wouldn't solve the issue. Today's guided bombs can be lobbed from a low altitude into a parabola from several miles away, then guided by laser from a distance, as the planes are accelerating upwards. And in all likelihood, those British interceptors would be downed by Eurofighter escort jets. Anti-aircraft artillery might actually prove to be slightly more dangerous to the Germans than the interceptors. The Germans would face other issues. Not all planes in the fleet are serviceable at all times. In 2017, the readiness rate of the Eurofighter fleet was just 48%. Indeed, due to a specific short-term issue at one point only four planes were ready, which the media famously jumped on at the time. Today the readiness rate is up to a decent 70%, but the fact remains a limited number of planes would actually be in the air at any one time. As pointed out in the beginning, everyone has serviceability issues. The RAF had 72% of their fighters available for missions at the start of the real Battle of Britain. A big issue for the Germans is the fact there would be so many targets. There's the RAF airfields, 48 of them in England alone, each of those would have easily a few dozen targets. There were some 50 radar stations, each of those had 7 different array masts, dozens of meters one from another and several buildings. During the real timeline battle, the Germans never managed to shut down the radars by attacking them, as each site could still work even with some of its arrays out of action. Due to the simplicity of those radars, repair and replacement of masts and arrays were sometimes performed literally overnight, after an attack. The overall number of individual fixed targets at all those places would likely be in the thousands, not included mobile targets like individual aircraft parked all around. The modern Luftwaffe might actually try to avoid spending bombs on some of those targets and go straight for the factories. But factories too were very numerous with hundreds of sites dispersed, a good deal of them in central England. In actual war, those factories largely avoided grave damage. Most of the German bomb raids concentrated on southern England. Once fighters were not available to provide escort, bombing raids deeper into England became too costly for the Germans. The Messerschmitt 110 was both somewhat worse as an escort fighter than 109 and there were three times fewer of them. With modern planes the range issues would disappear. There would be more than enough range to get a bomb anywhere in England or even Scotland. But hundreds of sites would remain and Germany would not know what was exactly built where, so concentrating the strikes just on specific aircraft type factories for example would be very hard. Better aerial recon in the form of modern recon cameras coming with tornado planes would help, but likely not be able to provide an exhaustive precise list of factories. Another issue that would affect the success of strike missions would be lack of GPS. Navigating by sight from high or even medium altitudes would be very hard, especially with cloudy skies, so quite a few missions might end up without actually finding a target. The inventory of German guided bombs would eventually become an issue. Sadly, there is no official number on that, so Binkov will attempt to estimate, using the sales data on some other countries. Due to greater involvement of Benelux countries in various NATO campaigns and Germany's foreign policy stance where they rarely participate in combat, it's entirely plausible Germany has no more guided bombs than, say, Belgium. And it very likely doesn't have more bombs than France, which does get involved in more operations abroad. 
having traveled to 1940, the modern Luftwaffe brought all their personnel, equipment, bases, depots and stocks, but they would be cut off from getting more weapons. 1940s technology is simply too primitive to help them attain replacements for their smart bombs, once they run out. Let's say Germany does have 2000 smart bombs. Its roughly 100 planes capable of delivering smart bombs could perhaps generate 150 sorties per day. Germany could thus hope to neutralize 150 targets per day. And keep doing that for almost two weeks, before the smart bombs run out. Why is the time frame important? Because stuff gets repaired. If not enough damage is done per period of time, the British may just keep repairing the damage. A factory hole can get hit for example. Half a dozen planes can get destroyed inside it. Various tools destroyed, dozens of people killed. But the nature of wartime production is to have fairly unskilled workers doing most jobs. So one could be able to replace them with new, inexperienced workers. When it comes to bombing the RAF bases, it would be even harder to make a lasting impact. Spitfires and hurricanes could operate from grass runways. And even the asphalt runways better suited to bombers can always be repaired. Depots could be destroyed and with them many bombs, bullets or a lot of fuel, but more would still come in. So it's possible that in the short term the modern Luftwaffe could, with its precise bombs, do more damage to factories and RAF bases than the old Luftwaffe did in the first few weeks. But the British would keep rebuilding, just as Germany kept going on despite massive bombardment from 1943 onward. Without smart bombs, using simple gravity bombs would be too dangerous. And to achieve precision, planes would need to go low and slow, going straight over the target. They would get in range of anti-aircraft fire. The result would be a slow but steady attrition. And when you've got maybe 150 planes in the area, losing even just a few here and there might be very costly for the modern Luftwaffe. Indeed, even in peacetime it's expected that some planes will crash. And in wartime stress levels would be higher, more flights would be performed and the chances for accidents would increase. Maintenance would be quite an issue for the modern Luftwaffe. No spare parts could be brought in from the future, aside from those already in depots. It's very likely that within months there would be issues with maintenance. Planes could likely fly for a year or longer, but subsystems would start breaking down. It's likely the modern Luftwaffe would lose less than the Gulf War coalition. But if low flying tactics persist and with maintenance issues going on through the following months, those loss rates would slowly creep up. Would fuel be an issue? Probably not. First off, jet engines aren't really picky on what kind of kerosene they run. Even World War II Germany should be able to produce some that would be passable to make the modern planes run, even if performance suffered. Engine accidents due to inferior fuel would not be uncommon though. And since the modern Luftwaffe did come with entire bases and depots, there would be a lot of fuel initially stored. Exact figures are hard to estimate though. There's a piece of info on UK's modern day base on Cyprus, storing 29 million liters of fuel. That's enough for 2300 Eurofighter flights. Overall, the modern Luftwaffe, even if it stores less fuel, would still have enough of its own fuel for a month and possibly a few months, before 1940 made kerosene starts arriving. One of the famous events helping the British in the Battle of Britain might not happen, as the British would know how dangerous new Luftwaffe is. In the real war, a German bomber accidentally bombed London. The British retaliated, sending bombers over Berlin. And Germans got furious and stopped attacks on the British airbases, retaliating in turn over British cities. Going to Berlin against radar-equipped Eurofighters would be suicide. Eventually, what would decide the battle would be World War II technology. Initially, the British would be completely paralyzed. But then the smart bombs would run out. Dumb bombs would start getting used. Germany would start losing more and more planes in those bomb runs and the production of World War II planes would come into play. The British were, in the real timeline, quite ahead there, and that gap only kept increasing during 1941. Indeed, from July to October 1940, they made nearly two times as many fighter planes as the Germans. A lot of that British production would suffer though, as long as smart bombs are in stock. So in the altered timeline, Germany might actually outproduce Britain for a short time. But rebuilding the German air forces from scratch would be immensely hard. Remember, 
all pilots and planes and infrastructure disappears, replaced by the modern Luftwaffe. So adding new pilots and crews means adding completely inexperienced people to the system that doesn't have almost any experienced pilots or technicians to train them. Some personnel would be injected into the system, taken from the factory test air crews and some of the retired crews and pilots would be brought in, but it's likely the rebuilt Luftwaffe would never even approach the competency it had in 1940. So even if the fleet of piston engine planes would get rebuilt to pre-war levels within a year, there would hardly be competent pilots to use them. The British would also suffer, but less so. After the initial onslaught where many seasoned pilots would die, the British would mostly stop flying and kind of try to keep the proficiency of their remaining pilots at a certain level. The Battle of Britain would get protracted, that's for sure, probably going into 1941, which means that possibly even the invasions of Yugoslavia and Greece would be postponed. Who knows when the invasion of the Soviet Union might happen, without huge Luftwaffe numbers. As the months pass, British production would go up, matching or even overtaking German production, and Germany would have to split their forces on other fronts by 1941 instead of having them concentrate just on Britain. Eventually even the guided air-to-air -air missiles would start running out. Granted, even just a gun-armed modern plane is superior to a Spitfire. In most air duels, the modern plane would rely on radar to pick and choose enemy formations that aren't too big, then use its speed and range to approach them from the best angle. And simply make one-off runs using their big guns. Heavier and faster rounds, together with radar-aided targeting, would have made them very lethal. Later on, the original high-performance rounds would run out and slow rounds would have to be produced and used. That's not to say modern planes would not get shot down occasionally. Lucky hits are always a possibility, but kill rates would probably be possibly over dozens to one. Still, planes would get damaged, subsystems hit, and even if not hit, radars, various avionics and eventually even engines would need maintenance. Fewer and fewer of the modern planes would work as the months go on. By the summer of 1941, it's doubtful even half of those tornadoes and Eurofighters would be operational. By that time, the Battle of Britain would likely end by a decree. Germany would simply deem it not worth the effort and attacks would stop. The RAF wouldn't have lost thousands of planes, but the Luftwaffe losses would match those when the original planes that have disappeared are accounted for. Perhaps the key benefit the Germans would enjoy is that one of the two main obstacles to the invasion of the British Isles would be removed by the neutralization of the RAF, even if for just several months. But would the Operation Sea Lion actually succeed? Would the Royal Navy be able to fight off the attacks from modern planes, striking them possibly just with gravity bombs is another matter, and perhaps another video. The Germans would not fully destroy the British ability to fight even though future RAF capabilities might be halved compared to what they were in the real timeline. If Operation Sea Lion somehow does get a green light, the American forces would have a tougher time amassing in the UK. The technology edge would help the Germans and even heavily influence the air war in the Atlantic, helping German submarines and making the British economy suffer even more. But World War II would go on, and Germany would not be in a better position than it was. Thanks for watching. If you liked my video, subscribe to my channel. If you want to receive notifications from YouTube about new videos released, you have to click that bell button. If you're using a mobile device, you'll get this prompt. And remember, Binkov may talk about hypothetical wars, but only real peace can bring us all together.